I'm Noah Haltgren, I'm president of the Minnesota Corn Growers Association. I started actually on our Kanyoi County Corn and Soybean Board uh, many years ago and just got involved with that board at that time. Um, during different meetings that I'd go to, talking to different people that were on our state board and council, um, kind of talked me into getting on the board. Yeah, I was interested in, in leadership more and I decided I want to get on the board and I've kind of moved up the ranks the last few years as uh, treasurer and then the vice president and now president since October 1st. You know, our mission with the Minnesota Corn Growers is to identify and promote opportunities for corn growers and that involves you know, a lot of different things. Um, our uh, you know, corn growers research uh, and promotion council um, spends you know a lot of money on different research projects um, you know trying to find new new uses for corn better uses for corn you know we've got we can grow so many acres of corn and produce you know at levels that you know 20 years ago we couldn't do and we need to find more uses for that crop so you know that's that's a lot of what we do. Um, I mean, think about 20 years ago uh, when you know when a lot of genetically modified seeds, um, you know, different hybrids in these seeds, um, they're just it's just a different seed that we can produce more. Um, and you know a lot of the, like the GPS technology on you know tractors or planters, you know, all all the equipment. Um, or we can place fertilizer more precise, you know, and like you say, we're planting seeds at a more precise depth in the ground and optimizing water more uh, than, than, than what, what we knew 20 years ago. And you know, you hope that 20 years from now, it's that much better. M me and my brother are fourth generation farmers on this particular farm. Um, we grow sugar beets, corn, uh, some soybeans, a lot of edible beans, and some canning crops and some alfalfa. Um, we currently run about 5,000 acres, which, um, like I say, as the years have gone on, we've increased um, some out of just a need, sheer size, and the fact that we've got you know, three families between me and my brother's family and my dad's family that are working the the land right now and there just needs to be more acres overall so okay getting back to you as president what's what are some of the goals that you have i guess you know my my main goal this this year um our corn growers association just recently this in, uh, adopted a new strategic plan, um, kind of different than what we had been before. And probably our number one uh, train of thought or, or thing that we're going to be focusing on is uh, communications and ag awareness. You know, we can spend money on research projects and, and uh, you know, have, have good projects. But if we don't have anybody listening, basically, um, it's not nearly as important. And we're just seeing that there's a lot of disconnect between the city and the farm. You know, there's less and less people that are involved agriculturally than than before. And a lot of it is just people. Just some people don't flat out understand. You know what. Uh, Know, different issues we have on the farm so that's why 
I mean, I, I've been saying this, ag awareness is kind of, instead of saying educating people, that ag awareness is the number one thing that we're trying to um, promote. Right now, what we're, you know, we're watching, um, you know, the, this buffer strip initiative that, that the governor um, proposed this last session. And of course, we're, we're still finding all the details. Um, I know that we're, our Corn Growers Association is very active, um, you know, figuring out, you know, where, where that's going to be. Um, another issue that we are watching real closely um, is just nitrogen, um, being able to, you know, apply nitrogen correctly. Um, that's one thing that's going to be coming up here. And uh, this is part of the reason that we need to be talking to, to people about these issues, having that. Um, and, and of course, water quality, it, I mean, and that's, you know, we spend, our Corn Growers Association spends you know, a fair amount of money every year on different water quality research projects. And going forward, I think that that's, that's gonna be, you know, our, probably our biggest thing to be watching for. I know our MCGA and some of the other ag groups have a good rapport with, with some of the legislators and uh, you know, some of the people that are making these decisions you know, on, on the things like the buffer strip. Um, I guess you know, we're, what we, or what I should say the ag groups were um, you know, in favor of you know, a, not a one size fits all program what that's what initially the governor had proposed that you know ev every strip of water basically would have a 50 foot buffer well where i think the a groups and what got actually in the bill was you know the a groups were were uh, in agreement that public waters if it was a public water ditch um, would would the 16 and a half foot buffer would be in place but somehow through the, you know, at the last minute, there was something that got put in that, you know, basically like all private ditches too would have to have this 16 and a half foot buffer. And that's been an issue that I know our Minnesota Corn Growers has been against. Um, and, and we hope that we can kind of right that wrong that got put in that Supposedly, nobody knows how that got in, which I amazed that can happen. But um, you know, it's if you're talking about, let's say you own a, a you know an 80 or, or a quarter of land, you have a ditch that goes in between. You have to have a 16 foot, 16 and a half foot buffer on each side. Well, you end up losing about three acres on that, not being able to produce food and you know not being able to produce a crop produce income produce money that could be more money into your economy you know that's that's why it's a big deal and and you know at, at the time when it first was announced you know initially they're saying you know they're they're pointing the finger at the farmer that were the the only the problems here and which isn't true at all um, that's what we were talking about before. It's it's everybody. Water quality is important to everybody, and everybody's got to, you know, if if there's something that people have to do, that we work together on, and not just blame one group and say that you're you're the the main problem with that. What can you tell me about the farm bill? How often? Um... Uh, the farm bill was agreed to uh, about. It was about a year ago, um, and usually it's it's like a five-year process that that farm bill um, is in place. We have you know recently had some attacks on you know trying to open up the farm bill again, um, trying to you know as part of the budget deal for whatever reason um, they want to open the farm bill and and. Uh, try and take more steep cuts to crop insurance, basically eliminating crop insurance. Um, you know, and 
and uh, supposedly whatever you can believe in Washington and a lot of the our legislators like Colin Peterson for one and some of our other you know good good leaders that are advocates of ag you know they they talk to management or the leaders and they promise that you know when they actually go through the bill that 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 won't be in their crop insurance but you know for for whatever reason you know even though the farm bill is so minute in the overall budget for whatever reason it seems like it's an easy target for you know non rural lawmakers to go after you know and like i say i mean it's it, it for what for what egg you know brings the economy it's it's money well spent that's that's in the farm bill right now i mean egg is so important to our area i mean there's so many things that egg drives you know even things that you want you know it's more indirect I mean, we have so many things already you know different you know, machinery dealers, seed dealers, things like that. But there's so many, you know, it, it's hard to even peg on, on what, you know, what, what would our towns be, you know, if egg was really to take the back seat and, and suffer. Well, yeah, we've got Canyon County, we've got lakes, we've got, you know, we've got some tourism and uh, we've got, we have, a, you know, a pretty thriving economy in this area. Agriculture is such an important part of that. And I know that you talk, you know, all the, the, the schools, you know, being able to, uh, you know, there's such a tax base, you know, amongst, you know, through egg that helps with our schools. And uh, that, that's, it's probably the reason that, you know, some of the smaller schools in the area are in existence because, you know, there's people still around, you know, I mean, what would, what would some of these small city, I mean, towns be without agriculture? I mean, they're, they're already small, but I mean, without agriculture, what would they be? From where I sit today, you know, in my area, um, you start going north of Highway 12, you have, you know, different kind of ground. You know, you get more rolling ground, some more, um, some more <clears throat> lighter ground, you know, you go 20 miles south and you get more flat, flat ground and, and uh, you know, usually it's a little better soils down in that direction. But a lot of this, the, the issues and, uh, you know, are the same that, that we deal with. Um, and I guess that's why talk about being part of the Minnesota corn growers, why it's important to, to have some um, leadership in that and having a, a voice, basically. What are some of the uh, issues that might be facing us, maybe even more specifically in our area? Is there anything specific in, in the Wilmer Canyon County area that we're facing? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll go back to the buffer buffer strip. You know, that that's a big deal. Um, I know that, you know, there's a lot of opinions, you know, people have strong opinions on that issue and that's, that's just going to continue. I guess one thing that, that uh, we didn't really bring up before, I know that the northern end of the county, um, irrigation issues, um, trying to get, you know, water permits and, uh, and of course having more of a streamlined approach to be able to, you know, whether a person can irrigate or not. You know, I know that, that there are some issues going on with, you know, looking at water in the northern part of the county as well. What is it like during the growing season for a farmer? <clears throat> well, I, I can say that one thing we do is pray. That's <laughs> because we are at the mercy of the weather, you know, and that's, that's our main driver you know, of, of uh, how the crop is. And, uh, you know, we can, we spend time, you know, finding the right seed variety for, you know, the particular fields. And we, you know, we make plans for, you know, which chemicals are gonna go on. But yeah, at the end of the day, mother nature is the, is the, the big dictator. And 
that's why you know in during the growing season farmers are are eternal optimists but at the same time they're they're pessimists at the same time because they're always thinking oh we could have a great crop and then we might you know like this year we kept you know crossing our fingers all the time you know this looks like a great crop and but true Minnesotans oh it could it could turn bad you know you know you could get one hailstorm or whatever you get one big windstorm and you know completely take it out and I guess that it, that kind of alludes to when we talk about crop insurance some why crop insurance is so important and uh, you know because you can completely wipe out I mean you could take out a whole farm you know, if you don't have crop insurance, you know, they're out of business. You know, a lot of a lot of guys, if in one one year that they aren't covered, they could be out of business. And I mean, our, the main uses of of regular what what you see in the field field corn is as livestock feed, cattle feed. Um, it's not necessarily the stuff that you eat. You know, it's not corn on the cob that, or it's not the cream corn that that you make. That's not the corn that you see majority of the fields. It's mainly um, as as a source of food for animals and livestock and use a lot in uh, biofuels as well. And actually talking about um, ethanol, um, right now, and this is, this is part of, I guess, our Minnesota corn growers um, thing too, that Recently, USDA uh, granted state of Minnesota eight million dollars towards different uh, um, ethanol infrastructure um, grants, and we we're part of a group that's is kind of uh, helping find the right people for those for those grant that grant money, and uh, I know that. There's a few outfits already that have tapped into some of that, and from what I'm hearing, that that their sales are going up. Um, the different blends, you know, that there's the main the main uh, infrastructure that's going to be going in are pumps with uh, you have the choice E15, E30, and E85, and I would assume that these stations, of course, still have. Regular unleaded, which of course we all know that's ten. That's everything that we call regular unleaded is ten percent ethanol. So, from what I'm from what I'm hearing from some of these uh, gas stations, that their volume is actually going up, which is a good thing. And and just having you know my personal preference, you know whether you whether a person thinks good things on on the different ethanol blends or not. At least you have a choice at the pump, and I think that's important that everybody has a choice at the pump. You know, I don't want to put in 10%. I, you know, I I try and put in E85 when I can, and uh, but we just need more infrastructure in the state. You know, where Minnesota is actually uh, the highest. You know, our our average blend has been over 10 percent and we're the only state that is at that point right now so what's the future look like for mcga well i hope it's a bright future i mean i i believe in in mcga and a groups like the mcga hoping that uh, we can increase our membership and uh try you know like i say try and overtake iowa as the the uh, leader in the country in membership and uh, continue to be you know important on the national scene for that um, and I know that groups like MCG are gonna be here for a long time you know it's it's a grassroots organization and uh, that that's important that you know everybody that is a part of it has a voice basically and that's gonna be the the mission going forward. MCGA does have a website and we also um, can be followed on Facebook and Twitter uh, if a person so chooses for that and, and it's it's updated you know a couple times a day there's different different things that goes 
goes on our Facebook and Twitter accounts, you know, different e events that are coming up that you know, corn growers are a part of or, uh, you know, just promoting, you know, some research project or something. Makes it real interesting for people to read that and, and get caught up that way. Mm -hmm.